Uh, hello there, everyone. Uh, to any and all of uh, my YouTube subscribers, uh, this is a video continuing my series on the nature of the dark side. Uh, it's a vast and complicated subject. There's a lot of subtleties to the Force. Now, the Force is, is a real thing, as I probably mentioned in my uh, earlier video. Um, it's all around us. It surrounds us. It's got everything to do with what's on mainstream media, including what's on the internet. A lot of people can't distinguish the two, but uh, all this is part of one governed body, uh, the media instruments that are available to the government. It's also how um, the older generations have been programmed on how to behave as well. Uh, their behavior can be just as predictable. It all depends on how old you are what information was available to you during your lifetime and uh, your thought pattern what sort of lies and trickery is going to work on you Jedi mind tricks all these things play factors um, in my previous video about the dark side I was talking about um, the Western world's relationship with uh, China, who is our greatest enemy at this time. Uh, they have an army colossally proportioned. Um, you look up on uh, army websites and all this sort of stuff, they'll tell you that the number is at about five million. But the truth is, we don't actually know how many soldiers they have, how much. We can have a pretty good idea how much aircraft they have uh, and how much undetectable nuclear submarines they have, as well as, as well as other types of weaponry. But we can't be entirely certain. Not even at the highest levels of government do they know this for a fact. And as what I said before is very true, um, the white people who are in Asia will be targeted should we cut all ties with that continent as far as business deals go. Surely most people have learned of the nature of capitalism at this point. If not, I suggest you subscribe to a man named Jason Unru, uh, who I called out in a previous video that I made. Uh, he's an alright guy actually, he's, he's you know, pretty level-headed and he, he tells a good story and he's good at telling uh, to younger generations uh, his worldly wisdom. I just don't agree with him on a lot of things. Our focus in modern day propaganda, uh, the news outlets, the media, is on the Middle East and homegrown terrorism and uh, terrorism abroad and all these other sort of things. The thing is, um, that's to mask what our true problem is, which as I said, is China. A lot of people don't understand that. They like to believe they live in an age of uh, without prejudice, without discrimination, uh, without racism. The fact is, the very mechanisms that create those negative uh, feelings, negative impressions, negative attitudes, have not gone away. They've just changed. They've changed direction. They're still very real. People are still very intolerant to certain things. 
particularly white supremacists like myself, I've probably mentioned this before. Um, the thing is, it is wrong to judge a person by the color of their skin or um, their nationality or whatever. As long as, as I've said, there are not too many of them that are different from you within your country. Mine being Canada, so. You know, all things considered, you know, I'm a pretty level-headed guy. Uh, not too bothered by a lot of things. But there are some things that I am bothered by. And getting back to what they would actually do to white people. The white people who were, unfortunately, the political members the economic and business leaders, uh, the visitors to the Asian continent, um, the secret societies within Asia would have no moral qualms about punishing them for anything our governments do and don't do as far as political and economic uh, relationships go. Uh, they'll take their frustration out on them. And it can be all kinds of things, from if they raise a family over there, it may even be with an Asian partner, or mate, or whatever you'd want to call it, but they'll still punish them for being partially white, or even just sympathizing with uh, Western culture. How are they going to do this? Quite simple. Uh, they put them in military-guarded areas where there is no escape. There is no um, free will. There's no. There's no hope for rescue. Uh, no one will come to save you. Nobody can hear you except for those whose blood is as cold as ice. And um, they will use not only threats against yourself or torture which is a very intricate subject um, and a very dark, hideous, terrible thing that the world would be so much better off if mankind had never invented it but uh, that is what true terrorism is terrorism is not somebody uh, who uh, promotes Islam even is anti-government or um, anti-establishment uh, maybe even um, they believe in anarchy plenty of heavy metal music is um, geared towards anarchy and all that sort of stuff there's nothing wrong with that uh, so long as people behave and act in a rational manner and uh, don't go all loopy over certain subjects, then, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that, but in the upper echelons of the government and uh, secret agencies, they can and do and will commit acts of barbarous, heinous, unthinkable acts to get their way. And the way how you do it is you put it on a singular level. You target somebody of significance. And uh, you say and do anything towards them. And um, if they have enough of their own influence, then it follows to their acolytes, their followers, their subscribers. And... Uh, you got a mass manipulation tool, and all you're doing is the simple task of targeting one influential member of society. I like to think it's me. It's not. I'm just making a YouTube video. Um, the thing is, there most certainly is uh, white people, and they may not have committed anything specifically in the way of a crime in Asia, uh, necessarily. They may have, uh, may not have, I, I don't know, I don't know who these people are, but they can get at them in certain ways that are just horrible.
horrible it doesn't begin to describe uh, the um, enormity of how cruel these people can be. Uh, basically any act of torture you can think of, uh, giving them drugs that cause massive pain, um, maybe dyeing their skin uh, bleach whites so they look like ghosts and make them become a YouTube partner in Asia talking about whatever they want them to talk about as a propaganda unit. Um, discussing topics that are particularly anti-white, anti-Western. Maybe they'll, I don't know, uh, scoop out an eyeball or something, make them look scary. Make them look like they're death warmed up. These things happen. Um, they're shielded from us because it would warp the minds of the um, feeble thinkers, the uh, undeveloped brains. They can't comprehend the enormity of how scary the world can be. And no matter how loud you scream, no one can hear you. Or no one who cares can hear you. And um, it's important to know that this is most certainly the elephant in the room. The one that no one discusses. There are no conspiracy theories, um, posts, ideas, conversation of this anywhere on mainstream media. Uh, and that includes Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, most certainly the news stations, and everywhere else. It just does not exist. And it doesn't exist for good reason. You have to be a special member of um, an intricate group to be invited to talk to such people of these massive subjects. I've mentioned the um, common phenomenon that occurs to people who start thinking in this general light, a general theme of thought, a thought pattern. It's called globus hystericus, global hysteria. Overwhelmed by how big the world actually is. Because you may grow up in a small town, you may even grow up in a fairly large city, but that's still only a fragment of a giant picture. Most people, they can't hack that. It's like the Matrix for them. They don't get awoken uh, at a certain age because their minds just can't comprehend how big the situation's gotten how big it's always been. Uh, you play games like uh, Starcraft or Command and Conquer in areas that are un, um, undiscovered, unresearched. They're covered in shroud. They're black. You can't see what's going on there. You don't know what's going on there. Maybe one of your spies or you know trade vessels or whatever went over that way and saw it at one time and then left as soon as it left the shroud didn't entirely retake but it um, inhibited your ability to know exactly what was going on in that area you got a general idea of things but you don't see troop movements you don't see um, military upgrades you don't see economic upgrades. Much goes on in parts of the world that the Western government is unaware of. There's a massive army brooding, uh, waiting for its chance to conquer um, desirable land for um, agricultural, uh, economic, strategic value. Um, these are the kind of people who they don't care if it sounds right or wrong to them. It's all about them taking their liberties. So a lot of people bad rap the Americans over taking liberties in, in the Middle East 
And they have. There's no getting around it. They've uh, done, you know, not very nice things over there. But that was a whole area that was festering with hate towards the West. And uh, maybe they never would have become the great empire that could conquer the West. But the fact that they could possibly ally themselves with Asia, a more competent army, um, was most certainly a threat that needed to be addressed and dealt with. Um, we can't have these massive armies brewing against us. And um, a way of... Um, Stopping that is to deceive and dissemble. You divide and conquer. You split factions against each other, small factions, so that they don't ally themselves to become bigger factions, and then those bigger factions become even bigger factions when faction or other factions, and then you got yourself a real problem. These are all concepts that I really get the impression that uh, your average everyday citizen doesn't think of, doesn't comprehend. They can't get past their simplistic first world uh, problems that are brought on upon from a dogmatic rhetoric perspective. They've been dumbed down by society all aspects. Their ability to think outside of the box is um, squeezed from them. Um, they say we live in an age of uh, information. That is a blatant lie. We live in an age of ignorance and misinformation. As some people will tell you, misinformation is more dangerous than being ignorant. Because if you're ignorant, then you know or you don't know that you're unknowledgeable of a certain subject. The fact is you're unknowledgeable. If you're misinformed, if you've been given misinformation, you probably believe that you are right. And you will build up walls in your head that will deflect and keep new information from entering your brain. And this leads to um, people getting obsessive compulsive and a uh, whole pile of other uh, psychological medical terms I don't know the meaning of. But uh, rest assured, I don't think they're very healthy for the brain. Um, our society has been um, deceived into um, looking at uh, global threats to peace as a, a narrow-minded, dogmatic view. It's the United States invading the Middle East. Or, if they want to believe the United States is the good guys, then it's the Middle East and their terrorists that are the threat to global peace. It's not that big, giant, massive army in the East that uh, lives in cities of smog, has plastic mixed in with their rice for their peasants who work in factories, slaving away. Um, that's not prestige. That's not showing how great our country is. Look what we can do for our people. Um, look how advanced our civilization is. Um, look at all the benefits that accompany being a citizen of that country. Okay, the Western world in a lot of places has its problems and we're far from perfect, but uh, these zombie cities in Asia where they just mindlessly work in factories building cheap products for Western culture. Um, that's a sad existence. And um, those people, if they'll do it to their own people, 
if they ever get the opportunity to come over here and start dictating to us how we're supposed to live, trust me, they'll take more liberties than the Americans are over in the Middle East. But my concern is that uh, too many intellectual minds, military leaders, uh, propaganda units are too occupied in the Middle East. Um, they can't um, they can't devote the resources to see things uh, how things are working in their own countries like in the United States like there are bridges falling apart the school systems failing a lot of people out of work this that and the other there are all kinds of problems that cannot be addressed because uh, they have to keep up the military apparatus to uh, ensure global dominance and um, a lot of people, this is the pinch of evil that they don't want to understand. They want to live in a world where there is no evil. Well, we're a long way away from that. Uh, not when we have so many enemies against the West that um, all they want to do is take what we have. People must understand that. They must understand that these factions, I'm particularly pointing the finger at China, um, they lack in uh, natural resource. Uh, Laban's around, whatever term they would use to describe that living space. And um, general quality of life. These are things they don't have. They're things they want. They're things we have. So, these mindless drones who just go on the internet and go, bash America, bash America, they're the evil of the world, they're the number one threat to world peace, blah, blah, blah. You poor, deceived, simple-minded fool. You don't see the world for what it really is. Like or not, the Western powers, we're the good guys. Trust me, we already have what we want as far as land space, uh, appropriate population size, uh, agriculture, um, economic resources. We have all that stuff already. Um, there's no need to expand even further. Although you would argue, well, we're in the Middle East, but uh, that's been a conflict that's been brewing for thousands of years. So. That's nothing new. Maybe new to you because you're 20 years old or, or 25 years old, but it's not new. <laughs> Things go on in this world that have been going on for a very long time. Hopefully we never have to um, directly fight um, these... Um, powers that are brewing in the east. I believe that we have enough inter intercontinental ballistic missiles that we should be alright, but that doesn't, um, that doesn't undermine the power of the force. The fact that their population density is in the billions, whereas the western world is in the hundreds of millions, a significant difference. And if it's just one jerk on the other end of the internet connection calling you names and talking to you in a manipulative manner um, and uh, based on how they know about human psychology and how to talk to people uh, they can deceive you into um, behaving the way that uh, they want you to and obviously, this is a problem, because uh, <laughs> there's a lot of idiots around. I mean, there's a lot of idiots around in Asia, too, so don't get me wrong there, but um, people have to be programmed to resist this problem, because it is a massive problem that's going to overflow someday. 
people around here call them trolls and uh, they're highly looked down upon as they deserve uh, but the ones around here okay they're creeps they're unwanted they're despicable but over there in Asia with how evil some people can be um, it's the difference between light and day um, it's just a massive problem and uh, in the future things are uncertain we don't know exactly what's going to go on we have only hypotheticals to go on what if our government collapses what if the military and political elite can't handle the pressure anymore because you have to recognize that the um, Western governments are much smaller in size and um, um, political manpower as opposed to the ones in Asia. Their secret agencies are much smaller in proportion. Not to call our guys a bunch of wusses or anything, but that's, uh, that's a heavy burden to bear. It's um, a lot of pressure. It takes a lot of toughness and a lot of grit in these uh, low thought pattern and insufficiently knowledgeable um, little twerps don't have proper respect for what our uh, intelligentsia our political, military, economic intelligentsia that have to go through every day the bar has been set too low um, your average day stupid person can be any age, uh, is too stupid. They don't know enough about the world. Um, and this is a disadvantage because change in management, change in uh, direction of where our governments are going, and uh, these people will, like sheep, follow their new shepherd. And when they do that, it's not going to be good for us. Um, there are some things I have uh, still not brought up, but um, I will in future videos. Um, there wasn't a specific point I wanted to bring up in this video, I just wanted to share some thoughts some ideas, uh, some constructive criticism is welcome. Um, yeah, so before I ramble on any longer about complex and intricate subjects, just know um, you shouldn't trust anybody who tells you that they're informing you, that they're letting you know about things that uh, they're letting you bask in their information. Uh, and that means anybody. Be suspicious of everything and anyone. Because uh, people, are, people are fucked up. It's just a fact of the matter. You ought to know that at an appropriate age that people can be fucked up. Um, yeah, I guess... That'll be my closing uh, topic. Uh, uh, I rather enjoy making these uh, Star Wars, Darth Sidious type uh, videos. They're kind of fun. Um, and it's such the perfect um, caricature of such a real life um, thing that's going on. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Talk to you guys later. Have a good one.